All right. This is the first mini lecture on uh, torsional stress and strain. And we're going to start talking about. All right. So we've just finished with uh, talking about axial deformation, and we came up with this nice equation here uh, for axial deformation. And now we're going to turn our attention to uh, not an axial uh, force, but an axial moment. Okay. So if we have a torque applied around the axis of the beam, uh, it creates uh, a torsional deformation. And so if we look at something like this uh, drill bit here, um, we're not pressing down on this rod, but we're twisting this rod. Uh, and that uh, rod has to overcome a significant load. Um, and so it, it'll have some deformation uh, in a twisting direction. Um, well, the, all, in axial deformation, we talked all about normal stress. This is going to be uh, completely about shear stress. Um, and so we'll try and keep these the parallel between these two things uh, in mind as we go along here. And while this is more complicated than axial stress, we're going to end up with an equation uh, that looks very similar to that. So pure torsional deformation um, that's only twisting uh, doesn't change a member's length, uh, its shape, or its radial lines. Uh, in other words, if we looked at a cross section of uh, this rod at any point, you would see that those radial lines still uh, make a straight line towards the, the edge of the surface. Uh, but it does deform uh, the longitudinal lines. Like if I drew a line along the surface of this and then twisted it, we would see that that uh, line was now um, at a diagonal. And so that axial torque uh, results in shear strain. It's changing the angle of that longitudinal line. Uh, we can think of torsional shear strain uh, as if we divided this guy into a whole bunch of thin cylinders that look like this, um, they're essentially grinding against each other, right? We turn one um, and it's pulling the next one along and that pulls the next one along, and that pulls the next one along. Well, that pulling is a shear uh, strain um, that uh, basically moves that shear stress and shear strain along the entire uh, rod. So if we look at uh, a visualization like this here, we can see that angle change of those um, longitudinal lines. Um, these radial lines remain straight, headed out towards the edge. Um, and the circles, the circumfer circumferential circles here, uh, also remain circular. So the total deformation uh, creates what's called an angle of twist. So instead of talking about a delta um, has a change in length like it would with normal um, uh, forces. Here we're talking about the deformation is defined by this angle of twist. At the end of this rod, this radial line will have turned um, that uh, full angle there. And that tells us how much this piece is uh, being torsionally deformed. Um, now, this is a function of distance, right? If I measured the angle of twist for this cross section here, it would be smaller than this, okay? Uh, and in fact, it increases linearly along there. So if I was halfway here, my phi for this circle would be half of the phi for that circle. And so if we want to really talk about the severity of torsional deformation, uh, it's in some ways, better to talk about um, the, the rate of this twist, right, which would be the change in the angle of twist as we moved in the x direction. Um, and that will, uh, as we'll see in a couple of minutes, this term uh, shows up later as we start to talk about ways of describing twist. So twist is the total deformation of uh, a given piece. Now, torsional shear strain is defined not by angle of twist, 
but by uh, the angle gamma. Um, and that angle gamma we can see in this image over here is the, as we twist this disc, um, you can see that that's right there is kind of the same angle that we have along here. Um, and that angle is going to be different as we move out in the radius, right? The line at the center isn't changing at all. Here, it's changing a little bit, right? Our distance between the two faces here the same, uh, but the change that essentially the angle of twist here is smaller here uh, and larger out here. And so gamma is actually larger near the edge of uh, of our disk here than it is toward the center. So angle of twist measures our total deformation. Like if this is one rod, we measure angle of twist as the difference between um, the initial angle and the final angle here. Um, it varies with length. Okay. The rate of twist is our shear strain the rate of deformation, and it varies with our radius. But it's because rate of uh, angle of twist increases linearly along here, the shear strain actually doesn't change with x, right? If I'm just measuring shear strain, say, at the surface here, it's going to be, this angle is going to be the same, you know, whether I draw this dotted line there or whether I draw that dotted line there. Um, so gamma tells us about that rate of deformation, that d phi dx. And we talked about this, but the gamma max is going to be the gamma uh, that's near the outer surface of our disk. And towards the inner surface, there's going to be very little strain, right? So, so we can talk about the material out here is going to be under a lot of pressure. The material in here, not so much. So if we did a little trigonometry, we could figure out that gamma is actually directly proportional to that d phi dx, right? The rate of twist, okay? Uh, and that it's also a function of, so this stays the same along the whole length of our member. Um, this tells us that that shear strain increases as we move out along the radius. I'm not sure why DefBods uses a row as their, as their radius uh, instead of R, but they do. Uh, and so we're going to stick with that. Um, as we move out towards the edge of our circular member, uh, our strain is going to increase. Uh, and as our uh, musician here is telling us, that means that strain increases linearly with the radius. Uh-huh. Okay. The maximum strain, as you might guess then, occurs at the maximum radius C, right? And so if we say if we say the Y max here, if we know that Y max, um, then we can find the or the Y the gamma max, then we can find that gamma at any point in the disk by figuring out well how far out of the from the center, are we?